So, I've been playing Cuphead quite a lot, and it has been... rage-inducing, to say the least. But as I played, I couldn't help but be reminded of another 2D boss gauntlet with a similarly steep learning curve. Titan Souls. There are many ways these two games are alike. Both use retro art styles, both have relatively barebone stories, and both are extremely challenging. They get their players to slowly learn and master their systems and make them spend hours, days, and even weeks in some cases, struggling against their controls until they finally beat it and have a massive release of built-up tension that leaves them shaking with a blissful euphoria that I'm sure a lot of people in the comments section will make clever sexual innuendos about. However, though they share a lot of ideas, they both offer different experiences. Each takes the concept of a difficult game in different directions. And today, I want to compare and contrast the ways Cuphead and Titan Souls make their players suffer. And yes, although I won't be diving into the lore or story of these games too much, potential spoilers ahead. Now, being that they're both 2D boss gauntlets, these games require similar skills to play effectively, such as accuracy, quick reflexes, pattern recognition, and... A lot of patience. However, they each test different types of skills, as Titan Souls is focused on testing one's precision, whereas Cuphead is focused on testing one's endurance. In Titan Souls, your only weapon is a magical arrow that is capable of beating the game's bosses, or Titans, in one hit, save for a handful of exceptions. Each Titan is defeated by striking its weak spot. These weak spots are fairly small, and hitting them not only requires a good aim, but also a quick one, as since you're unable to move while aiming, it gives the Titan the perfect opportunity to strike back. If you miss, you're forced to waste time retrieving your arrow, leaving you even more vulnerable than you already are against the Titan's attacks. Of course, you can still easily roll out of the way, but even then your rolls need to be properly timed. If you leave a second too late, the Titan will just manage to catch you, but if you're a second too early, it'll have plenty of time to readjust and end you. In this game, you need to be able to hit your mark quickly and without fail, otherwise you'll be left defenseless. This is reinforced by the fact that every Titan in the game kills you in one hit. Just like your bow, you have one shot, and you need to make it count. You need to be precise. Cuphead, however, is not too concerned about whether or not you're a good aim. Often, the bosses take up an entire side of the screen, making them an easy target. And while they sometimes have specific places that need to be shot, these weak spots are still large enough to hit with no problem. Simply being able to shoot in the right direction is more than enough. What becomes a problem in Cuphead, though, are the boss's attacks. Each battle is made up of multiple phases, which introduce new attack patterns that the player has to quickly adapt to. You have to dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge around every little thing. You can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. What? Oh, oh. Any other questions? You practically have to learn their attacks off by heart. And while the game is certainly more forgiving than Titan Souls, letting the player die after three hits rather than one, the struggle is still just as punishing. This is emphasized by the progress bar that appears every time you lose a fight. Which I personally wish they would show during a fight, but whatever. It can be somewhat disheartening at times, almost mocking you for failing, but it gives you hope that, with a little more practice and patience, you'll be able to win. Cuphead pushes you to the brink of sanity as you do your best to endure its trials. These two games offer unique experiences by focusing on different aspects of the player's skills, and to please through every part of the gameplay. And this lets each game play around with different mechanics that suit their focus. In Cuphead, for example, you can buy various different attack skills and buffs to aid you in your journey. But there are only a few slots available for them. Two for attack, one for supers, and one for buffs, to be exact. This forces you to prioritize your skills and figure out which combination will help you succeed. Should you give yourself more health even if it'll decrease your attack damage, or should you get your special attacks to charge up faster so you can do more damage quickly? Should you use the weak gun that tracks targets for this boss, or should you go with the strong one with a wide spray that forces you to get right up in the boss's face to use effectively? And though some skills are universally useful, such as Smoke Bomb, which stops you from taking damage while dashing, there are some that may be better suited to use against different bosses. It adds a layer of strategy to the game that makes the suffering more... engaging, strangely. But this kind of customization is absent in Titan Souls, and for very good reason. In Titan Souls, you have a single weapon, and you need to, as the saying goes, get good with it specifically. It's all about honing your skills with this single tool, and adding customization to this model, though a fun idea, would take away from what Titan Souls gameplay is about. What Titan Souls offers instead is a way for you to perfect your skills even further with its various challenge modes. This gives you the opportunity to test your skill against even harder versions of the Titans, or to play the game without being able to dodge. 
There is even an option to play the game with only one life if you're feeling confident enough. Titan Souls focus on precision probably wouldn't work well with customized layouts and weapons, but it does give it a chance to let you challenge yourself and become a true master of its gameplay. Both these games' approach to difficulty lend themselves to different mechanics that make them feel distinct from each other. Though these games share the same core concept and have many similarities, they both take them in drastically different directions. Each game gives you a unique experience that challenges different skills and abilities, to the point of making you want to snap your controller in half. They show just how much variety can come about from a simple idea if you're willing to be patient, to be creative, and to suffer. And yeah, those are my thoughts. I've been playing a lot of Cuphead recently, and it has been both an absolute joy and an absolute nightmare. It's a complicated relationship. I'd definitely recommend it. And if you want to see my thoughts on Titan Souls, then check out my video where I talk about why it's so fun to play. A lot of the points for which I feel are also applicable to Cuphead. Anyway, tell me what you think. If you agree, disagree, if you prefer Cuphead over Titan Souls, if you prefer Titan Souls over Cuphead, if you find both just as frustratingly challenging, etc. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this and want to see more, then check out my last video where I talk about how Rick and Morty uses and abuses its simple yet complex story structure to create some amazing stories. And be sure to check out a new show I'm doing with some awesome people called The Four Nerds Podcast, where four nerds talk about stuff for nerds mostly and don't forget to like comment share and of course subscribe to come fly with me and hopefully I'll see you later